All right, Bogos, we're here for another episode of Pete's Garage. So today's episode is about paint care and uh, cleanup. Clay bar, wax, protect and seal. Shockingly, I found out from uh, Pete that not only has he never clay barred, which is not necessarily a surprise, because most people don't do that, but he has never had a lick of wax applied to this vehicle. So given the fact that it's as shiny as it is, I'm very surprised. But you know what? Today's episode is here to make it even better. So you're going to see the before and after difference. We're going to start off with the uh, clay, Mother's California Gold, uh, because it's easy to acquire. Uh, then we will be doing the Meguiar's Mirror Glaze Polish, the brown stuff, number seven. We're going to let that set a while because it's oily and it doesn't dry as quick. It's actually not supposed to dry completely like normal wax. Then when we take that layer off, we will do a uh, NXT Next Generation Meguiar's 2.0 purple bottle to seal in the polish. Then we will do the Meguiar's number 26 yellow wax. And once we do the clay, we will actually wash the car instead of wiping the clay residue off, which just grinds and buffs the paint. Just wash it off. No need to mess around buffing and wearing out your arms. And as you see here, we have the uh, list of supplies that I recommended for Pete to get. Extra pads, uh, one for each type of uh, cleaner. Obviously the NXT, the 26 yellow, the 7 glaze, the deep crystal car wash, which uh, we will use uh, after we do the clay and then he can use in the future for all of his car washes, which I haven't actually asked him what he uses otherwise. And of course the Mother's California Gold, which is actually a better buy than it used to be because now you get two cloths and two bars of clay. Before it used to be just one bar of clay and the fluid and that was it. Uh, if we need it, uh, Pete previously had cleaner wax, which I don't think we will need. Uh, but there you go with all the stuff. All right, Bogos, we're ready to get started. I've applied my uh, one-size-fits-all surgical gloves. Unfortunately, I could not find my uh, box of new ones, uh, as I still have not unpacked from the house, but whatever. Anyway, I always keep a pair or two in my grabber, so I brought these that I've used before. And the reason I want to have gloves on is not necessarily to keep my hands clean, but to keep the oil and contamination from my hands out of the clay and the sponge pads that I'll be using. Unfortunately, I don't have a set for Pete. So, uh, also not shown, uh, Pete has already dusted off the car, which is great. I forgot to ask him about having a shop vac with a blower, but that's okay, because he's got... PSI. He's got the, uh, yes, the 80 PSI uh, air compressor, so he's blown off the entire car to remove any loose dust and whatever stuff that might have uh, fallen on the car because obviously we don't want to grind stuff in. Even though the clay is supposed to uh, scoop all that stuff up, you want to have a clean surface. Uh, so we're going to start working on the clay. All right, Bogos, we got the uh, clay here from the uh, mother's kit. Uh, obviously it comes in these cellophane bags. After you're done using the clay, you'll want to put it in a sandwich bag, obviously to keep it from getting contaminated with scuzz and crud. The amount of times you can reuse it is determined by the amount of how much junk is in the car's paint. Obviously if you have a real grungy car, you may only get two or three times out of it. If you keep your car really clean, you might get six or seven times out of it. Obviously the amount of times you get will be determined by your comfort level, uh, determined by the amount of discoloration and scuzz in the clay. So uh, that's your own decision. I make no warranties or guarantees on that kind of thing, of course. Uh, obviously what we need to do is we're going to squish out the uh, clay into a, a pancake pad. And obviously it's already in a bar, but you want to squish it out a little bit more. And then we're going to be using the uh, stuff that comes in the box. Obviously for myself, uh, now that I have a source for uh, Meguiar's clay, separately clay, uh, when I go to do mine again, I'll be using the uh, Meguiar's clay and just the Meguiar's quick detailer to uh, lubricate the stuff. But you can use whatever. I mean, quick detailer, Showtime, who's ever brand of stuff. Basically, it's just a lubricant for the clay. It's, the fluid isn't doing any of the work. It's the clay that's doing the work. All right, Bogos, as you see, I've uh, flattened out the uh, pad uh, or the clay bar to uh, fit me because... Uh, that's just the way I like to go. Uh, I've done this uh, more than just a couple of times, so I've developed a comfort level, so uh, others out there that have done this might disagree or have a different way, and that's okay. But uh, you've seen the results on my car, so uh, I think those speak for themselves. 
Uh, and I'm thinking that uh, Sean Crowley probably would have uh, lots of good tips and heck, he might be the one that ought to do a how-to uh, cleanup video since he makes a living out of it. But in the meantime, this is what you get. All right, Bogos, here we are. Uh, Pete's working the camera, so if it sucks, blame him. Um, and actually, we don't even have to do, obviously, all of your... Yeah, you can avoid the stuff. clear bra there. Yeah, Pete's got the clear bra. Obviously, we're going to stay away from. Point yeah, here. we're going to we're going to clear. We're going to stay away from the stripes uh, because obviously this isn't going to really do anything for the stripes, as far as I'm aware. Nor is any other the wax stuff that we're going to do. Uh, I forgot about even having stripes, so I didn't actually uh, go online to find an answer about what to do with the stripes. But we'll come back to that later. All right, so we got our clay. We got our surface, obviously. You obviously just need to spray a little bit. Prime it. Okay, we got it good. Are right, you gonna spray? And you just gently run it over the paint. Like this, obviously. You can feel it cutting the scuzz out of the paint. Surprisingly, Pete does not have a lot of stuff in his paint. Don't be afraid, you don't want to drown the surface obviously with the fluid, but you also don't want to like try to, you know. I'm not trying to save uh, fluid here. So I do have a suggestion for the stripes, and that's that aerospace uh, that's 303. That's exactly what I was thinking. And I have a bottle of it. I know you do, and uh, that's what I was thinking we need to use on that. Uh, we may have to just real quick get online and do a quick check just to make sure. So I wouldn't want to cause anything to rip up your stripes. Well, I've used it on them before. Oh, you have? Okay, yeah. well. That's what it's made for. Well, okay. Well, I thought it was just like rubber or plastic, but if it stripes, good. Then we're yeah, it's good for vinyl. All right, well, then we're good there. All right. Unfortunately, they're cheapo vinyl stripes. Next year, they'll be painted. All right, all right. So you see what we're doing. Obviously, it's a pretty straightforward thing. When you don't feel any more scuzz, you can feel the grit. You'll, you'll know when it's when it's cleaned out the stuff. Now, obviously, there isn't much stuff to lift out of the paint, but there's a little bit of stuff. So you just keep on doing your thing. And don't try to rush. That's why I don't like doing clay bar, because it takes freaking forever if you do it right. But the results are worth the payoff. But I definitely don't enjoy it, because it is so much work. Well, there you go. Like I say, you can feel it. Well, you can't feel it because you're not doing it, but I can feel the grit. And it's not because I'm going over dry metal. It's because the clay is cutting the stuff out of the paint. So that shows you your demonstration. Obviously, we're not going to, Pete isn't going to film me doing the whole car because he's going to jump in here too. And obviously, the other reason I like to have the, the bar thin is so I can get around nooks and crannies into the corners and edges. Because as uh, those of you who have been around on the website long enough know, I'm anal with a capital A, far more than probably... And a capital N, and say? another capital A, What'd and another say? capital L. <laughs> okay. So, um, I probably take things obviously to a much higher level than uh, the old Roman bulk of you will. But, hey. No worse than me. It's just, well, yeah, that's true. I, I have, I, I did notice the last time I was over here that Pete probably rivals me, maybe even potentially surpasses me in analyst about certain things. All right, so there you go. Obviously, we're not going to keep doing this uh, with the video, but you get the idea. That's what you're doing. You're just, you're just basically scrubbing off the scuzz out of the paint with the fluid. Uh, after a period of time, your clay will get thin, and you'll want to wad it back up, ball it, and then pat it back out. Obviously, also trying to re recirculate the scuzz back into the ball uh, and have a fresh surface, have a fresh clay surface on the paint. But uh, the bottom line is, that's what you're doing. All right, Bogos, uh, let's step over here in the light. This is Pete. Obviously, he's changed his pad a few times, you know, kneading it over. But you can see all the scuzz. He got his side done faster than I got mine. I'm going a little bit slower. And... Uh, He's used the crap out of that uh, spray detailer. You really don't need to have wet spots because that means you probably use too much. Obviously, it doesn't matter. You still get the job done, but hey, you can always maximize your fluid uh, usage. Obviously, you see the, the swirl wet spots on Pete's side. And then over here on mine, I'm a little more uh, efficient with the uh, fluid. And you don't see any, uh, you know, there's a little bit where the spray dripped, but uh, over here, you don't really see any of that uh, excessive wetness. So it just helps extend the life of your products without having to go buy a new product so fast.
All right, Bogos, I've almost finished my side. Something I forgot to tell Pete. Did you want to do the dirtiest parts last? Like these, uh, the rocker trim, do those last, and the front and rear bumpers do last? Uh, I'd say do the front, I'd do the rear first. In order of dirtiness, do the rear first, then the front bumper, and then your rocker uh, trim last. Uh, and then, like say, the lower part of the rear bumper and all that. But uh, it's not a big deal that I didn't mention it to Pete, but it just keeps the crap out of your uh, clay for the longest amount of time. So that's what I'm on to. I'm going to do uh, bumpers and uh, my side of the rocker. Actually, we have less work to do on Pete's car, which I forgot. You already know about the uh, clear bra on the top. Well, he's got clear bra all over the front, so we're really not going to do anything with the front. So that trims out a lot of time. But uh, that's the deal, is uh, you would do your uh, rear and then uh, front and then rockers. But we don't need to mess with that on Pete's. All right, Bogos, uh, we're done. Uh, not much to see except the residue left behind. Here is uh, the ball that Pete was using. You can see it's obviously a little dingy, but not too bad given the fact that this has never been done on this car. Uh, Pete's uh, rubbing one out here with the other one. Uh, that's the one I used in the uh, same kind of level of dinge. But uh, obviously you decide on your own when you want to throw away the clay and get a new one. Uh, whatever level of dinginess you're uh, comfortable with. But uh, now we're going to wash the car off because even though the instructions say buff off the residue as you go, why should you put extra arm effort into it? Why buy it? Plus, to me, every time you apply a fabric or anything to your paint service, that's another avenue for swirls and scratches. So why sit there and grind on it and buff that off because you really have to press hard to get it off. I mean, you can just wash it off, which is what we're going to do. We're just going to wash this stuff off, and we'll dry the car, and we'll be ready for the next step. Plus, they're also got stuff on the stripes, and we didn't do anything to the stripes. We're going to use the 303, so it also helps get the scuzz off the stripes. All right, Bogos, we've just finished washing off the clay residue. Unfortunately, even though I had it set off to the side, I forgot to bring my kick butt. All-powerful absorber brand drying uh, cloth. It's actually not even cloth, it's just synthetic chamois. But we got by with uh, Pete's assorted pile of microfibers to dry off and compressed air. And Pete has already exclaimed repeatedly of the dramatic difference in the machine's finish with just the clay. And we haven't even begun to wax or polish or anything. He cannot believe the difference. And I've been telling him, just like I've been telling you, Bogos, you have got to clay your ride. So, as you can see, hopefully it shows up on the uh, video here, possibly under the light, how much shinier it is. And like I say, that is just strictly claying and then washing it off. So we're going to let it dry off a little bit. I mean, we dried it, but uh, there's some drips and dribbles. And I need some Dr. Pepper or something. Take a break. Come back out. We'll lay down the uh, first coat, the polish, the brown stuff, the number seven. And then we're going to let that soak in a little bit, probably watch a movie. And then we'll come back out and wipe that off. All right, Bogos, we are ready to apply the first coat of uh, chemical, which would be the Meguiar's number no. seven show glaze polish, the brown stuff. Um, so not much to say about it other than just to get it done. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Of course, I got my gloves back on. So like I say, my hand doesn't uh, contaminate the wax pad with oil, sweat, or other scuzz bodily fluids, whatever. And so this is what we're going to do. And we'll be back when it's done. Of course, you got to shake your stuff. Any of your liquid uh, polishes, you have to shake up good if you didn't know. And uh, we'll be back. All right, so Pete bought extra pads, like I mentioned. He bought the uh, AutoZone brand. Uh, I, myself, use Meguiar's, not because they're Meguiar's, but just because they're a good foam pad. Uh, the microfiber finish on these isn't really needed, but uh, whatever. They should hopefully will still work the same fashion. Uh, anytime you use a pad, you want to wet the pad. Um, you don't want to necessarily get it soaked, but pretty much the only way to get it fully wet is to soak it, but then you want to squeeze it out good. Uh, it helps get the uh, chemical you're using at the time into the pad well. 
Uh, if you just stick it on a dry pad, it uh, kind of floats on the surface as opposed to getting into the pad and uh, working well. All right, I've got my pad wet and I uh, wrung it out and I kind of whip it and flip it to uh, shake out uh, some more water so it's not really wet. Obviously, you just want it damp, like I say, so it can soak up the uh, polish that you're using. So uh, we're going to start doing this. Uh, once Pete gets done jerking around with his other car that he just recently got, putting in blue, blue beam headlights, I'll have him hold the uh, camera and we'll uh, show you putting on the uh, brown stuff. All right, Bogos, uh, Pete finally got done uh, messing around with his other car. So the best way to do this really is so you're supposed to apply your chemicals with the machine. Uh, Pete doesn't have one and actually I don't either. Actually well, I do, but that's all right. I do? I think I do. Uh, well, you, ha you can't just use any machine and pad. you got to get the right foam pads for the right stuff you're using. So that's a little extra step that, uh, like I say, maybe uh, Sean Crowley can uh, uh, chip in on. But uh, in the meantime, for uh, unprofessional uh, applications, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put it on by hand, take it off by hand. But actually, the ideal way is to put it on by a machine and then still take it off by hand. Anyway, it's pretty straightforward. Like I say, you've probably already done this. Just put out your stuff. And then you just uh, disperse the stuff onto the surface. And then get your circular motion. Obviously, you're not going to replicate what a machine does, so there's no, trying, no sense trying to scrub fast or anything like that, because you're not going to get like a machine will. So the idea is to get the chemical onto the paint. And then we're going to, once we get the whole car done, we're going to let it sit a while, because this stuff is oily. Uh, and it's that way on purpose. So uh, it's not going to dry up powdery or otherwise dry where you can just wipe it off easily like any of the other chemicals we'll be using. This is polished, so therefore, like I say, it's kind of an oily base, and it will never dry completely, and it's not supposed to. So <clears throat> that's the thing there. So like I said, that's what you're doing. I've already done this part while Pete was away, and so we've done this. So that's just what you do. You just keep doing your thing. And then when we're all done, uh, we'll show you what it's like to take it off. All right, Bogos, I've completed my side. Uh, as you can see, there's the haze. Like I said, it's not going to dry completely. It's an oil-based product or it has an oily consistency, whether it's actual oil-based, but I'm not a chemist. Pete's starting on his side. And once he's done, we'll have dinner, whatever. We're gonna let this soak in, probably watch a movie. We'll come back out. We'll get cracking with the rags, the uh, cloths, and wiping it off, polishing it off. And then uh, we'll be on to the next two steps, which are actually even easier than this one. That's the beauty of this, it gets easier as you go. So uh, that's what we're doing, and uh, we'll be back. And BOGO's one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, from one side to the other, and not just because we're doing half and half, but because it was a good time to break, I rinsed out the pad, because it does get pretty oil logged, and even though it's the chemical that you're putting on there, eh, I don't know, I just feel it's better. Plus, the wax would be picking up stuff. Even though we did clay and wash, there's still the option for, uh, or opportunity for stuff to get in it. So I rinsed it out good, squeezed it out, and uh, back up to a, a fairly clean uh, pad there. All right, Bogos, we've uh, had our dinner. We let the uh, number seven uh, dry up a little bit, soak in. Like I say, it doesn't ever get fully dry because it's an oil-based kind of thing. And uh, so that's what we're doing now. We're just buffing off. Then we're going to do the uh, 303 stuff on the uh, stripes. And then we'll lay down a uh, coat of the NXT. All right, Bogos, we've finished wiping off the number seven. You need to make sure when you wipe it, you do a very thorough job. Go back over it multiple times, either in broad sunlight, you know, not in the sunlight, but actually, you know, well illuminated. Uh, obviously, we're here through sundown. It takes a long time to do this stuff. So I carried around a uh, portable light because you don't want to have any smears or obviously leftover accumulations because that's going to contaminate your next layer and since it's oily it just makes a big smeary mess. So uh, Pete did his side, I did my side, Pete did his side and then we kind of switched and went over each other's side to be extra thorough with the light. Pete's all orgasmic about how shiny it looks. He's like, damn man, if I didn't know any better I'd just quit now. So, uh, and it's like, man, it's going to get better than this. We're not even halfway done. Well, we're actually halfway done. We've got two more coats, but the hardest work is over. That oily coat, that uh, number seven, it takes a lot of freaking effort to get that stuff off because, like I say, it doesn't dry 
So you have to rub and rub and rub to get it off. The next stuff is easy. We're going to put on the NXT in the purple bottle, the uh, Tech Wax 2.0, and that is to seal in the polish we just laid down. So we're going to get started on that, and then we're going to probably take a break, watch a movie, come back, wipe it off, put down the yellow stuff, and then we'll be done. And Pete will have the car shinier than he's ever had it. Alright, so same process. We're going to lay down the uh, NXT Tech Wax, uh, the Purple Wonder. It doesn't come out purple, but I love this stuff. But anyway, it's the same. Whoops, I want to take the cap, take the cap off the, uh, the bottle there. And I love, I love how this stuff smells, too. As I was talking to Pete earlier, it's like... He likes fumes. I smell this stuff, and it's like, damn, I'm getting hungry. Anyway, so you just lay it on. Same procedure. No big deal. Not rocket science. They do give you your own pad with the purple stuff, the NXT, which is cool because, as I mentioned before, it's the foam pad that I love. So, uh, and the only reason it's better than, than the other stuff is simply you can wash it out a lot cleaner. But it's not a big deal. It's not a, a deal breaker. But anyway, so that's what we're going to do, and uh, we'll be back. All right, Bogos, you're now wiped off the NXT, and I think you can clearly see just by the reflection of the light how much better it is than the previous version. So uh, Pete just keeps getting more and more ecstatic at each coat we do. Uh, a lot of hard work. We're definitely getting the workout, the Miyagi wax on, wax off workout. But uh, the dividends and the payoff is more than worth it. Look here, you can see the reflection of the garage door just like a mirror. And we haven't even got the final coat on yet. So now we're going to lay down the number 26 yellow wax. Alright, so we're going to lay down our uh, we're gonna lay down our uh, coat of uh, yellow 26 same thing should know the drill by now whoops not there and uh, I got to take the thing off oh you did what I thought you didn't take the, the cap protector off no, no I did that again so same thing you know the drill by now you just lay your stuff on obviously you see what it looks like the yellow 26 our final coat got my pad moistened and we're ready to rock We'll come back when it's over. Alright Bogos, we are freaking finally done. It's 15 till 10 at night. We started somewhere just about after 12.30 in the afternoon today, but we are done. As you can see, as Pete says, it has never looked this good. And as I'm holding the camera here, you can see not only the clear beam reflection of the lights, but you can even see the reflection of the water pipes on the ceiling. And I'm holding the camera away over a foot away. Uh, mile deep shine. The three part process cannot be beat at this price. I mean, you can pay a lot more for stuff and get a lot better shine, but this cost Pete less than $100. You know, if you want to spend $500 for a shine, I guess you can go ahead and knock yourself out that way, but uh, for the rest of us, this will do just fine. You see the uh, reflection of the garage door, which is even higher definition than it was before when I held it up here. So, uh, you can see my reflection, look at that. Fan friggin' tastic. It also helps that Pete's paint has very little orange peel compared to like mine. Uh, mine has a very disappointing amount of orange peel in it, but eh, whatever. But uh, yeah, Pete gets an advantage there. Uh, but yep, yeah, obviously 12.30 to uh, call it 9.30, of course we took time, we, yeah, we took out time for dinner. And full eight and a half, nine hours. So, uh, yeah. And that's two guys doing it. If, you, if you're doing it yourself, plan on two days, because I know that's how long it took me. Because yeah. don't forget, even though we got a late start, we also didn't have to wash the car to begin with. Pete already had it washed. But if you're starting from scratch, obviously that's the first step you need to do is wash your car clean, good, dry it off with forced air, and then you do all the steps I just recorded. So you, however long it takes you to wash your car, and of course, if you know me, been on the board long enough, you know, I take even extra longer time to wash the car because I take all the parts off. Well, not all of them, but I take the wheels off and things like that. Look at that. Look at that. You can't beat that, man. You cannot freaking beat that. And that's without a machine. Just think how much better if you put it on with a machine and then take it off by hand. So, yep. Pete helped me out. He uh, fixed my uh, air pump and bought the switch for it, fed me. 
Uh, and I guess I'll get fed tomorrow night because tomorrow, the reason I'm over here is tomorrow is another episode of Pete's Garage because we're going to do a, uh, he's going to do a dyno tune on his machine. So that's why I'm even over here because it's early in the morning and I'm lazy and I don't like getting up. So I figured I'd come over here the night before. And then he starts like, hey man, come over and show me how to clay. And then one thing led to another and it's like, oh boy, I'm going to end up doing doing all the steps of the car because there's just no way I could walk away. It's like, yeah, this is how you do a clay. Good luck. Uh-uh, no way. I want to get it done from start to finish. Yeah, that would have been uh, successful. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's where we are. So like I say, come back tomorrow where we will have another episode of Pete's Garage. Now it's recording. It was recording and it just died. Oh, really? Yeah. It was the batteries. Because the thing didn't go back in. Well, we're going. Well, we'll just keep an eye on it. All right. Okay. So. All right. All right. <laughs> Do you have, you, you know, I didn't think about it. I'd say, oh, great, two, two bars of stuff. There's only one bottle of fluid. Well, you can pass that back and forth, right? Uh, well, kind of, because you kind of have to keep squirting as you go. All right, so I'm ready to, uh, you don't need to be recording me. I'm going to be editing that out. <laughs> Down here. 3D beef house. Oh. Uh, the purple wonder. It doesn't come out purple, but I love this stuff. But anyway, it's the same. Whoops, I want to. Take the cap Take out. Take the cap off the, uh, the bottle there. <laughs> Edit point.